Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Zalitz, and today we're going to be talking about the Peppy Summoner from Final Fantasy IV, Rydia. Now, what does she do? She is a magic attacker, which instantly lets me know that she's going to be trying to take Kuja's spot for top mage in the game right now. Um, hopefully, she doesn't, but uh, I'm not because I'm not really sure what she actually does yet. We'll have to find out what she does when we get to that point. But um, anyways, hopefully she doesn't take Kuja's spot because I'm actually really hoping that uh, I can still use him. I hope that she's not absurdly strong like some of these other new characters that have been coming out but anyways let's go ahead and look at her chart here she has a four star attack which is really good you know for for an hp attacker she's just really good um her hp is <laughs> abysmal at one star which i've been noticing is kind of a trend that we've been getting lately with these attackers of just just having pitiful hp for some reason um Sephiroth is, is a great example of that just terrible hp uh she has a two star defense which is also very terrible but she trades all that off for a maximum of five star max bravery which is very very good she also has a really high speed stat at four star which is pretty good a lot of these attackers that we've been getting have been pretty fast so that's also that's also that's always a plus uh her initial bravery is at a three star which i don't think is really important for attackers but hey you know the more initial bravery the faster they can get the damage out so that's always a decent thing to have there now let's look at her stat table here her HP is at 3656, which is <laughs> terrible. Her initial bravery is 739, not too bad. Max bravery 1500, you know, as high as it could possibly be. Her attack is above average, and her defense is obviously very, very pitiful compared to some of our other characters. All right, now let's go ahead and jump on into her command abilities and see what she has going on over here. Her first ability here is called Flare. It is a one-hit bravery plus HP attack that grants small magical attack up for three turns, very similar to Kuja, who also buffs himself with buffs himself with small magical attack up for three turns, which is really good because that means that they won't have to rely on people or on characters like Ash to buff them for that for those buffs. They can you know reliably bring another character and have them debuff or something like that to help them out help them out with more damage her second ability is called summon leviathan it is a water one hit uh, aoe bravery i was about to say aoe <laughs> so, <laughs> a one hit aoe bravery attack with low action delay grants small max bravery up to, the, to all party members for three turns now i would say this would be good but uh because we have uh characters like saz who got their 35 cp it's not going to be that effective unless for some reason her weapons give her a, a massive boost to that, but I highly doubt that. So that's not going to be that important, but the uh, the AOE probably will be pretty strong. So we'll have to see when we uh, look at the trailer video. Uh, anyways, beyond that, we have the Bravery Plus attack, which is a one hit Bravery attack. Lasts as long as Water Enchantment is active, requires Flame Whip's passive condition after using Summon Leviathan. So I'm guessing after, I'm, I'm assuming that's like a 35 CP weapon. So after using the the... The ability to summon Leviathan, she'll get a Bravery Plus attack, which is also really good. Um, her next ability, which is her EX, I'm going to... Yes, is her, her EX. It's called Summon Dragon, a 5-hit AoE Bravery Plus HP attack. Sounds good. Ignores Defense, which is very good because, you know, this would be very useful against this... Against that stupid Lena Dragon. <laughs> we don't even have EXs yet, so can't even rely on that. Moderately raises Bravery Damage dealt against a single target. Uh, deals 100% HP damage to all enemies, which is not bad. Inflicts water resistance down to all enemies for four turns. Also good. That's, that's like a Garnet type thing, except for uh, for all enemies. Requires Mystic Whips passive and usable when the EX gauge is full, which is her EX weapon or her Mystic Whip is the EX weapon. So overall, she doesn't seem like she has that much going for her. But uh, let's see what she has in the passive abilities and see if she gets anything useful there. Uh, her first passive here is Flare Power Up. Slightly raises bravery damage dealt by Flare. Okay. Break boost slightly raises max bravery for one turn after breaking an enemy. That's not bad. Break bonus up slightly raises break bonus earned after breaking an enemy. Of course, that goes hand in hand with this one. With the uh, break boost. Summon Leviathan power up. Of course, Shot is coming. Slightly raises bravery damage dealt by the Summon Leviathan. Buff attack up slightly raises attack while buffed. Always good. Flare charge up increases max uses of flare uh, by one. Buff speed up slightly raises speed while buffed. Not bad. Uh, summon Leviathan Charge uh, increases the max uses of Summon Leviathan by one. Okay. 
And Miss Survivor. Slightly raises initial bravery, max bravery, attack, defense, and speed if HP is maxed when the final battle starts. So she basically gets a, a boost across the board on basically all of her stats once the once the last battle starts, which is always going to be good. And I'm assuming she's going to have an artifact that boosts this as well. So this is probably going to be a very strong passive to have. Um, it's our artifact. I'm sorry, not passive. Artifact. These next few passives are obviously for her 60 enhancements. Her first passive here is buff boost and speed up. Slightly raises max bravery and speed while buffed. All right, slightly. That's not too much. That she's she's gonna get a, a little bit there. Uh, flare extend increases the max uses of flare by two. When using flare, increases the number of bravery hits to four. Tremendously raises its potency. Bravery can overflow up to 120% max bravery and extends magical magical attack up duration by one turn. Uh, I mean that's okay, I guess. I mean it's not amazing. I mean. It can only overflow up to 120%, which is kind of where I'm just like, uh, it's, uh, it's whatever. I mean, it's okay. It's not, it's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. It's, it could be better, I think, in my opinion, but it's whatever. Buff attack and boost up slightly raises max bravery and moderately raises attack while buffed. Those two are always good stats to have. So she'll basically be getting a pretty decent amount of max bravery from her passives here. Um, and then her last ability, or her, not ability, <laughs> her last passive here is Summon Leviathan Extend. When using Le when using Summon Leviathan, raises bravery based on max bravery before the bravery hits. Okay. Increases the number of bravery hits to four. Also, just like the other one, just like Flare. Tremendously raises his potency, and bravery can overflow up to 150% of max bravery. Slightly raises bra or max bravery up's potency. Extends the duration of buffs granted by one turn. Triggers an AoE HP attack after use. HP damage is divided equally amongst all enemies. When using bravery slash plus, bravery attack plus. Increases the number of bravery hits to two. Slightly raises potency, or sli and also slightly raises his potency. So overall, it seems like definitely Summon Leviathan is going to be the stronger of the two. But we'll have to see when we look at the trailer video which one is actually the stronger one. I'm assuming that it's probably going to be uh, Summon Leviathan, but we'll have to see. All right, let's go check out her gear now. So her first weapon here is the Mystic Whip, which we talked about earlier, which is her, which gives her the EX ability, uh, Summon Dragon. Her 35 CP is Flame Whip, increases the potency of Summon Leviathan and moderately raises bravery damage when there is only one target, which is really good because that because you know now we don't have to worry about um, the damage being weaker because there's only one enemy, so that's going to be really good. Uh, increases the potency and extends the duration of max bravery up. I assume that they were going to give that. Um, whether or not it's still going to be uh, whether or not it's going to be stronger than Saz's, I highly doubt, but we'll see. Grants water enchantment to all party members. That's going to be extremely powerful <laughs> that right there is going to be very powerful we'll uh and that that will probably be uh probably play a huge part in defeating her ex mission so we'll have to see what where that goes turns bravery attack to bravery attack plus while water enchantment is active water enchantment grants water elemental bravery attacks of course her 15 cp is called the chain whip increases the potency of flare increases the potency of magical attack up and extends its duration of course that's pretty that's pretty uh pretty good so not that not amazing, but that's pretty good. That's not bad. It's about, about what I expected. Um, but this one, the 35 CP is definitely going to be where it's at. That, that water elemental um, enchantment is going to be very, very strong. Uh, Adalon Tiara, max bravery plus 220 and attack plus 72. <laughs> she got the uh, the strong. Uh, she got the strong armor. She's already doing a little bit better. Oh, man, I don't know. It's going to be really hard uh, to, to to toss. It's going to be a, a coin toss. I can't tell who's going to be stronger, her or, or Kuja. So. Uh, and then her final, her or, well, her 90 CP armor, the Mist Ring, HP plus 680 and defense plus 84. So that's going to be, those are amazing stats, but I guess that's just to boost her overall weak, her weakest stats, which are HP and defense. So it's not bad. Overall, her weapons are pretty good. Now let's go check out her artifacts. Now let's see. Bravery Guard Up raises defense power by 5% when bravery is over 50% of max bravery. With a one star and ten percent with the two star version, I don't even know why they give this to us. They might as well just remove this. This, this thing sucks. Like, come on, who's gonna take this? Miss Survivor up increases the effects of Miss Survivor by two percent and five percent with the two star version. Of course, this is the uh, the the increase in stats all across the board when she reaches the last battle. Um, so this is gonna be really good. This is <laughs> obviously gonna be number one priority for her. Uh, flare power up raises bravery damage dealt by Flare by five percent with the one star and ten percent with the two star version. That's also going to be really good. And then Summon Leviathan Power Up raises Bravery Damage dealt by Summon Leviathan by 5% with the 1-star and 10% with the 2-star version. Now, as far as what artifacts I think will be best on her, I don't know. We'll have to see um, what it's like 
in her trailer video. But if I had to choose right now, it seems like she's going to be doing a lot of AOE damage and a lot of single target damage. So I can't, like, it's kind of a toss up. Like, I mean, obviously, the, uh, the Miss Survivor up is going to be number one priority. Hands down, it's probably going to be number one priority. But then again, she's also probably going to want a lot of attack and a lot of max bravery. So that's probably what I would go for if I was actually building Rydia, which, I mean, I'm, I don't think I'm going to pull for her anyways. But if I had to pull for her, I'd probably just go for 108 attack, 330 max bravery, and then the, uh, the Miss Survivor power up or the Miss Survivor up those this, like those three I feel like are gonna be her best three stats and then uh, after that like a four and a five I'd probably go with like summon Leviathan at four and then flare power up at five those are gonna be like major I mean they'll, they'll be you know major damage increases but uh, I don't think they'll be game as game changing as those other three stats so let's go ahead and move on into the gotcha simulator since it's actually working for this banner and we'll actually be able to look at that for the first time in like i don't know two characters or something like that so let's go ahead and head on over there and check that out here we are at the gotcha simulator page now let's go ahead and look at the uh spreadsheet here that was made by chris inger shout out dude thank you for always making these for me and helping me or well just setting these up in general for me so that it's uh so it looks fancier and looks cleaner and everything so let me tell you a little bit about, about what I'm going to be doing here. For those of you who are new and don't really know how I do things here, first I'm going to be doing these draws, these 10 plus ones here. And then over here where you see draw attempts, 1 through 10, basically for each attempt I'm going to be going in and doing draws until I get 1 of each of these characters' weapons. So basically I'll be going until I get 1 of Rydia's 15 and 35 CP, Yang and Shadow as well. Unless there's something that's missing from the banner, but from what I know, uh, thanks to the notes that Chris left me here, it seems like Yang's was the only one that isn't uh, available on the banner itself. So, I mean, if we pull one, we'll pull one, but I'm not going to be looking, I'm not going to be drawing too many times to try and get it. If we don't get it before we get everybody else's, then I'm just going to say that it's not there. After that, everything will become piled down here because he set, he set up the... Uh, the spreadsheet to calculate everything and then once all the information is put into these columns here it'll get it'll you know take in all the data and spit it out and give us you know averages for everything and then over here i'll be putting in the uh the amount of all the weapons that we got all together through each and every single attempt so it'll give us an, another draw average for however many attempts you decide to do so we'll go ahead and check that out um but yeah let's uh no better way to show you guys than to just do it. So let's go ahead and start doing these draws. And we'll go until we get, you know, just one of everything. So let's go ahead and start this thing. All right. So our first draw here. Let's see what we get. Uh, Vaughn 35 CP. Uh, okay. Well, that's not good. All right. On the second draw, we got a... So see, since we got that Vaughn 35 CP, I'm just going to chalk that up to an off banner. And then on the second draw, we got Shadow 15 CP and Radio 35 CP. So what we're going to do is... We're going to put a 2 there for Rydia and a Shadow 15 CP 2 as well. So, and over here we also have to put in a 1 and a 1 there. The 2 represents how many draws it took to get those weapons. So, that's pretty much what that means. Depending on which draw it was pulled on is how is how we'll, uh, how everything will be set up. So, since we got Rydia's on the third draw, we'll put a 3 there. Now we'll put a one next to her 15 CP, and we'll also put we'll change the shadow weapons to two since we got we've gotten two of his 15 CP so far. And now we'll just keep going on straight, you know, going down the list. All right, so we got Yang's 35 CP here. So that was this is the fourth draw, I believe. Yes, the fourth draw. So we're going to put a four there. We're going to go over and put a one over here with his 30 in his 35 CP spot. And we also got two more shadow off or two more shadow weapons, so we're gonna put that up to four now. Now all we're looking for is shadow 35 CP, so hopefully we can get that thing and uh, call this one a good pair of draws. Alright, so fifth draw we got another Rydia 15 CP, so we'll just change that to a two. We got another Yang 35 CP, so we'll change that to a two as well. Alright, and everything's looking pretty good actually, so the draw rates don't seem to be too bad. And on the sixth draw, we got Shadow 35 CP and another Radio 15 CP. So that's not too bad. So let's go ahead and put a six here. And a Radio as well. All right, so we put a, we're going to put a one for Shadow. And a, yes, another 15 for Radio. So that's going to be a three. Yeah, and that's pretty much what I do. So you see, 
I'm not gonna keep going for for Yanks because I you know I, I trust what Chris tells me, so I'm not even gonna go there. I'm probably just gonna put an NA there to you know signify that there's no answer, there's no uh, there's no draws there, there's, there's nothing we can get. So as you can see, as I go to, uh, down the list, it'll keep compiling these numbers and it'll keep creating averages for the draw chances. So it's gonna be pretty good. Um, this one seems like it's gonna be a pretty good banner, I think, but then again, never know. So. I'll, uh, I'll do this and I'll get back to you guys in just a minute. And we finished everything here. So before we move on into any of the results here, I just want to mention to you guys, uh, especially for those of you who are new, uh, the red numbers here are basically the worst of the bunches that we got for each draw attempt. Now, the reason, like, the reason why I say that these numbers aren't a bad thing is because the higher the number is, the better the average you're going to get. It makes it more realistic. Because if you got a whole bunch of ones and ones and ones, it's just RNG. You know what I mean? I mean, I mean regardless of what it is, RNG, RNG is RNG. But the bigger numbers that you get to throw in, like, you know, into the equation, you know, the, the bigger the deviation from those smaller numbers, the you know, the, just the more precise numbers you're going to get when you're doing these. Of course, you have characters like Shadow who have, like, literally the best draw rates ever which means you know be careful guys you're about to get that ross and shuriken when you do these draws if you choose to draw for video uh <laughs> oh my god <laughs> sorry oh my god that i'm sorry that's just the draw video that i made it's it's shadow just popped up <laughs> uh but anyways uh let's just go ahead and look at these uh these draw rates here so Overall, for Ridia's 15 CP, we got a total of 39 uh, for total draws there. 56 for 35 CP. So obviously, her 35 CP was a little bit worse to get. Uh, nothing for Yang because there was, you know, he just didn't show up. Like, the the rando 35 CPs I always assume are just the are supposed to be, you know, those weapons like the 15 CP for Yang, but they just end up getting messed up somehow. I don't know how that works, but anyways. Uh, for for Yang's 35 CP, we got 59, which is very similar to Rydia's. For Shadow's 15 CP, we had 17 total draws for this, which is really good. Which, again, <laughs> like I said, <laughs> watch out for that Ross and Shuriken, because it's about to smack everybody who pulls on this. But uh, the 35 CP, we had about 65 total for this. And then, uh, so basically, the calculator here will tell us that uh, overall... To get at least one, it'll take you about four pools to get one of uh, Radio's 15 CPs. And on average, about six for the 35 CP. For Yang, it'll also be about six. And then for Shadow, it'll be about two. And then seven for Shadow's 35 CP. Which overall doesn't seem that bad to me. You know what I mean? Like 35,000 gems. You know, tossing some tickets here and there. And I mean, it's, it doesn't sound like a bad deal to me. So, the banner seems to be pretty good. And then, of course, the overall drawn weapons aren't too bad. You know, we see here for Rita's 15 CP, you have about a 38% chance there. A little bit closer to 38.5, but it's still too, about 38% chance. For the 35 CP, she has a 43.62% chance of obtaining at least one overall, overall all these attempts. And then Yang's 35 CP had about a 31% chance, which is it's, it's okay. It's a little bit less than both of Rydia's, but it's okay. For Shadow, you had almost, you basically are guaranteed to get Rasta and Shuriken. So, so I'm just telling you guys, just prepare for that. Prepare for that Rasta and Shuriken, because it's about to smack everybody that pulls on this. Uh, for Shadow 35 CP, it was about a 33% chance, which is not bad. And of course, the off banner seems to be the best that it's been in a lot of these simulators. So 23 about 23% with that, and that's like the lowest I've ever seen it compared to everything else. So that's going to be really good. So now let's go ahead and put this to the test. Let's go ahead and do the simulator one more time, and we'll uh, we'll test this out, and we'll see if these averages are actually, you know, pretty correct or not. So we're looking for, you know, about seven draws altogether to get everything. So let's just uh, aim, for, aim for seven draws, and let's see if we can get, you know, all the stuff that we want. Okay, so right off the bat, we got two Yang 35 CPs, which is, you know, really good. All right, so two, we already got Yangs. On the second draw, we got Radius 15 CP. Okay, already better than average. Uh, on the third draw, we got Shadows 15 CP. We got that Ross and Shuriken right there. <laughs> and two more of, of Yangs 35 CPs, which is actually, if we if this was actual, an actual draw, like this would be uh, pretty, pretty good. This would be amazing, actually. Um... On the fourth draw, we see Shadow 35 CP coming out. Still looking for Rydia's. You know, we still have about four draws left to go before we uh, before the average there is uh, messed up. But uh, 
Fifth draw, we got a off banner 15 CP. Not good. And then on the sixth draw, we see Radius 35 CP coming out, which is what we wanted. So basically, we got everything we needed within six draws. Okay, at least one of everything. So that means that these averages are actually very, very good. Like this is it's about it's about what we were expecting to have. So of course, I mean, will the banner on global be as good as this? I don't know. We don't know. RNG is RNG, and you know, you might get something on you might get everything on your first draw, or you might not get anything after 100 draws. You know, you never know with these kind of with these uh, with these simulators or these these gotcha draws. Because I mean, hey, look at what happened to me on brothers. I got completely destroyed by that banner. <sighs> I hate you, Squall. Uh, but uh, <laughs> you know, then there's other banners where I just pretty much get everything you know within just a few tickets or you know uh, like a draw or two and that's it you know like that's just how rng is so don't get discouraged if you don't get everything right away but these uh but judging by the results this one seems to be pretty good so i mean it's looking up you know so with that let's just go ahead and go look at her uh her trailer video and see what she's actually about because i'm actually curious to see how strong she really is uh coming into this game now and last but not least, let's go ahead and look at her trailer video. Here we are on the DFFOO official Twitter page. Check them out, guys. They always have these trailer videos out. I'm so glad that they started releasing these for global. But um, let's go ahead and check this out. I do have the volume lowered so that it's not blaring in our ears. So now let's go ahead and just look at what she's about. Oh. All right, let's see, let's see. Okay, so she met up with Yang. Edge and Sarah. Somebody. But if you've grown up, does that mean you're from the future? Yeah, because you know Sarah, she's a uh, <laughs> future Sarah. After the incident, I ended up in a place called something. I didn't get to see it. Or oh, Fay March. Time passes more quickly in Fay March. Okay, so let's see. Flare. Okay, that wasn't too. That wasn't that strong. Okay. Summon Leviathan. Okay, so she can cap out pretty much with this. Okay, some of the Viper. What were they trying to highlight there? I like how they, <laughs> I like how they had the summon Levi uh, the the Leviathan summon there for that. Um, initial impression? Uh, no. <laughs> Is she stronger than Kuja? Uh, no. <laughs> but uh, let's let's just go ahead and re-go through this. Um. Maybe I'm missing something. I just I don't think that she's that strong. Like okay, so here's Flair again. Okay, MLB with 35 CP, 3763, just right off the rip. No buffs, no nothing. That's I mean with Saz, will that be strong? No, that still won't be doing a lot. It'll probably be going up to like maybe, maybe. And like I mean maybe with buffs it'll probably go. I want to say it'll probably be somewhere in the ballpark of around 8 to 9k damage with that ability. But who knows? I could be wrong, but it doesn't seem to be that strong. And then summon Leviathan. Okay, that's where she's basically going to be capping all her stuff. If, if there's AoE. On single target, it's pretty weak. It's pretty bad. It's like really, really bad. Yeah. Yeah, I don't... I just... I don't see her being. She's nowhere near Kuja's level. Kuja is still gonna be god tier uh, mage. Like she's probably. If I had to put her like just from this trailer video, if I had to put her somewhere, I would say that she's literally probably like an A tier. That's that's how bad I, I the initial impression of her is. But uh, we won't really know until we actually play the game and get her, and we'll get you know and get the. Uh, the buffs and I get to see people using her in the co-op and whatnot. So, but if I in the, off of initial impressions, A tier at best. Like that's literally just how not good she seems in this trailer. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to seeing if uh, Saz, Shadow, and Yang are going to be any better from this. So hopefully they are. Hopefully they they work a bit better than she does. But uh, we'll have to we'll have to wait and see. All right, that's gonna do it here for Rydia's informational video. Overall, she doesn't seem like she'll be too strong of a character, and she'll probably fall flat right after she's released. Maybe with some better team setups than what they showed in the trailer, she'll be able to perform better. But I doubt that because the only other person that she could realistically play with potentially is Garnet. Because Saz is going to end up being the cornerstone of the team anyways. Because he's the cornerstone of 95% of the teams anyways. 
Although I do think that the water enchantment will come in clutch and would have against Lena's stupid dragon. <sighs> but we won't talk about those dark times anymore. Anyway, next up, I'll most likely be doing Sid's EX mission as well as uploading my playthrough for Lena's story event because I want it documented because I never got the chance to upload it due to some huge inconvenience. <sighs> stupid dragon. And after that, I'll probably be doing something for Pandemonium's trial and max him out. Um, just to try Sid's EX with it. So be on the lookout for all that. And uh, yeah, until next time. Bye, guys.